Before we begin, let's take a deep breath and chant Om three times. Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. Good evening, and welcome to the first of many events celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Life Management Yoga Center, Hong Kong, the first overseas branch of the Yoga Institute, Mumbai. Life Management Yoga Center, or LMYC as we call it, is a nonprofit classical yoga school based in Hong Kong sharing yoga as a manual for a mindful and joyful life of purpose. Since 1998, LMYC has been running classes for people of all ages, from children to senior citizens, as well as corporate workshops that holistically address physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. To empower the next generation, LMYC also runs teachers training classes recognized by the Ayush Ministry of the Government of India and has already graduated 80 teachers in Hong Kong. We are proud to celebrate our 25th anniversary with the launch of Global Yoga Fans a series of webinars inviting inspirational yoga practitioners from all over the world to share their personal journeys in yoga so that we too can discover our own paths to a more fulfilling life. Our 25th anniversary also coincides with India's celebration of its rich cultural heritage as it celebrates its 75th year since independence. LMYC is incredibly grateful to the Indian Ministry of External Affairs, Ministry of Culture, Ayush Ministry, and, and the Consulate General of India in Hong Kong. Thank you. We also pay homage to our mother institute, the Yoga Institute, established in 1918 with a, over a, a century of heritage. I'd like to share with you a brief video uh, created by Sangeeta and Ramesh Ahuja, the founders of LMYC Hong Kong, to express their eternal gratitude to the leaders of the yoga, center, the, the yoga Institute Mumbai, the late Dr. Jayadev and Srimati Hansaji Yogendra. Namaste. Welcome to Life Management Yoga Center, Hong Kong. As you can see, at the door of LMYC, over the shoe rack, are the instructions, leave the negative outside. And when you are inside, it is all peace and serenity. Two thousand and one, nine eleven. I remember Dr. Hansaji was here in Hong Kong, opening our center, Life Management Yoga Center. Two thousand and two, 
Hong Kong Center is dream of our Dr. Jayadeva. I realized it was Dr. Ji who asked me to share the yoga knowledge with others. And I have really grown from sharing and teaching to others. He taught us do small things but with perfect awareness. Not do big things and with stress. Dr. Jayadeva was godfather to me. For all knowing and all loving. He was readily available to meet people, to meet us all whenever we visited him without any prior appointments. In spite of being the head of the Yoga Institute, he was, I never saw him busy. He was always easy. Dr. Hansaji Yogendra, an angel of compassion, godmother to me. Her faith in us and her encouraging words, you are one of our best students. I'm not sure whether we really are. But till today we continue to teach, to share since 1998 at Hong Kong Center. Keep smiling is her message to all of us. So let's keep smiling. In my opinion, the most important work which Yoga Institute has done is to introduce Yoga Sutras to all the students and in all the classes. Because it is the Bible of Yoga and every institution in the world now is recognizing it. This work which was done by Yoga Institute decades ago. About personal transformation, in 1996 I was undergoing a very minor depression and the one week residential camp was enough to go and give back the medicines back to the doctor. I remember I went back to my homeopathic doctor and I told him I don't need any more of your medications. I know how to fix my mind because my mind was low at that time. Furthermore, I realized I was very angry person. Anger would come to me at least 50 times in a day. But thanks to the Yoga Institute and the teachings, and the practice of the same knowledge. I am a better person. Anger doesn't come to me anymore. Although I may choose to be angry, if I want to be angry to discipline, thanks once again to the Yoga Institute, Mumbai. The Yoga Institute was founded in Mumbai by the revered Sri Yogendraji and is now led by the dynamic and charismatic Dr. Hansaji, president of the Indian Yoga Association. And of course, a full list of accolades, which I will mention in due course. She's widely regarded as one of the topmost authorities in yoga in India today. But you've not all logged on just to listen to me go on and on. So without further ado, we are delighted and honored to welcome Dr. Hansaji. I'm not here. Mm -hmm. Namaste, Hansaji. Namaste, Namaste. So good to see you. How are you? Yes. <laughs> How nice to be with you all here today. Yes. It's lovely. It's wonderful. <laughs> Tell me. They are still in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hansaji. Hi. So Hansaji, um, thank you for gracing us. Firstly, thank you for gracing um, us on our 
uh, whilst we celebrate our 25th anniversary at LMIC. So proud that I was there first to start the center and turn that over. I remember. It's supposed to be so great, uh, so lovely. I feel so nice because of your dedication, basically the dedication of Ramesh Ji, uh, Uja, Sangeeta Uja, and then joining many more teachers. You have kept this classical yoga alive in the Hong Kong, which is wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, I mean, of course, the, the thanks are, 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 of course, all <laughs> due to the Yoga Institute uh, and the teachings of the, yoga, of the Yoga Institute. Thank you so much. So, Hansaji, you featured in, in countless uh, videos covering you know, all subjects of life from what to eat, what not to eat, um, how to take care of your joints, how to take care of your skin, uh, coping with anxiety, improving sleep. You've already done all those videos and it's all available uh, to anyone who's interested in it. Yes. But today I thought, let's try something new. Um, okay. Today I thought uh, we'd like to hear about you and your journey in yoga. Is, is that okay? Okay. I mean, uh, what I want to teach, I have mentioned that. But what you would like to know, just ask me and I'll answer. What do you want to know about me? Okay. So, so let's start where all good stories start at okay. the beginning. <laughs> yes. Perhaps, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about your childhood. Okay. When, when were you born? Well, the same as our independence, 1947, October, 8th, October, 1947. So this year, even we are, we at the Yoga Institute are celebrating our, my 75th birthday. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, you, you were born in, uh, in Bombay, was it? Yes. Yes. I'm born and brought up in Bombay only. Bombay is my everything because I'm here. All the time in so, Bombay, so can, my sorry, schoolings sorry. in Bombay, all the education in Bombay, everything in Mumbai. Wonderful. Yes. So, can you tell us okay. about your childhood growing up okay. from okay, 1947? Okay. It's a very Maybe. different world to how it is today. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, at that time in 1947, this the Yoga Institute at Santa Cruz was purchased by founder Sri Yogendraji exactly at the same time. The land was purchased and I was born there. Land was purchased in Santa Cruz and I was born in Villeparla, just one station before walking distance. So that's how the whole story goes. So maybe there was some celestial connection that how now I am be I am there to now go ahead and take place. So you know, take care of yoga and yoga institute. So some connection, whatever it is. So my father at that time used to come and learn from Sri Yogendraji yoga because this ashram was formed and my father would come and he would learn. And whatever he would learn, he would forcibly, I mean, that was, it was a force, forcibly teach us as small little <laughs> kids, my siblings, my three brothers and me, I'm the youngest girl. And we all have to sit and do all the asanas, all the pranayams, all the kriyas, everything I was, we were doing right from that age. And that was okay. done. And I used to enjoy. And let me tell you one thing. Whenever we would do some mischief, father said that, come on, study. And I have not studied or I have not finished my homework. He would punish. And the punishment would be stretch your legs straight and put your head down on your knee. Paschimottanasana. <laughs> <laughs> and Paschimottanasana for half an hour. You have to just sit in that place. Body was oh, no, flexible. No, no. Yes. Body was flexible. So it was no problem. Okay. My head would be down and I would be sitting there. <laughs> and that's how our journey goes. Sometimes we'll, make, we'll be made to do Shirshasan for 20 minutes to half an hour. Just be on over there <laughs> and so on. So, so that's so, how so. I've been <laughs> brought up from childhood. Could you could you explain what is shear sasan for for those who don't know? Yes, shear is a headstand posture. In childhood, 
uh, you your body if you are into this field your body becomes flexible very fast okay in childhood and so um, standing on head was one of the very popular thing people used to feel that when you stand on head the good circulation is there on your head region and your brain would be functioning better of course it's a myth it doesn't go like that but then the best posture is of course shoulder stand sarvangasana which is the most traditional posture that also we used to do but shirshasan is one of them and uh, it seems that uh, jawala nehru that nehru family they also used to do yoga and they had their guru dhirendra brahmachari and he used to make them to do standing on head and then later on majority of them had the problem in their knee and you know neck and all those things and nehru also died with brain hemorrhage you see the arteries they they get bust and so in traditional yoga uh, person should do what is called as sarvangasana head shoulder stand posture which is very slow but very healthy and safe way to increase circulation to the head region and we should increase circulation to head region but that could be done by many other things you you stand on shoulder you bend forward so that your head is between your legs as i told you paschimottanasana and so on so my point is in my childhood i have gone through all these things and then i was sent to a school which was first a convent school uh, but then after fourth standard they, my father met one person who said that your daughter is so so creative she has lots of arts in her because i used to sing i used to dance i used to be on the stage very fearless i was and all that i was so they said such a girl should not be in convent school she should be in some other school so i was shifted from convent to a school which was a gujarati medium school run by gandhi ji's on gandhi ji's principle mahatma gandhi's principle and that school was such a school where there were no helpers no workers office staff was hardly any it was just the principal and the teachers and one accountant everything has to be done by children cleaning sweeping sorting cooking to everything that was the school and i was i am coming from a very affluent family my father was very rich and i had never washed even a single spoon with my hand till now till then because we have servants all the time we are supposed to just uh, eat well and study well and play well that was our life but then in school i was taught all these things right from every down to thing we used to clean even the toilets we used to clean we used to work in garden and know how what the gardening is we used to do the carpentry work mason work and all the works we were taught it was in you know value education bottom till ssc i was in that school and that school had a very strong impact on my personality we used to spin uh, charkha you know gandhi ji's spinning wheel we used to do that for one hour and sing bhajans and sing bhagavad gita so bhagavad gita was by heart to me right from that time we didn't know the meaning but we used to sing gita and that's how my childhood went up and that was beautiful okay So so you, you also had to clean toilets you said. Yes. Okay so I guess I guess this was a lesson in humility coming yes. coming from a wealthy household. Yes. It was a household humility one thing and value every work and every worker. No work is low or high big or small. Every work is equally important. sitting in the office becoming a managing director is equally important as cleaning the toilet and keeping the garden clean or doing any such thing and so that i could recognize so i could feel every worker even at the institute or anywhere else that education made me really humble really down to earth and i felt that every human is so important where is the scope for ego i am some big and somebody is this and that it's every one is equally important and that is the message given even in spirituality and so 
it was this and i was really happy for 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 those of you uh, who who are tuning in now and who don't know um don't don't let uh, hansa ji's humble demeanor uh deceive you she's um for those of you who don't know um in the 1980s hansa ji appeared in the popular tv series yoga for a better living yeah making her instantly recognizable all over india today she's the face of the yoga institute which has millions of subscribers on their on their youtube channel hansa ji you also have so many official positions on various yoga associations how do you how do you have the energy to manage all of this at the age of 75 do you do you ever feel any pressure not at all <laughs> i tell you what is the definition of age in yoga in spirituality there is nothing like old or young or any such thing it comes to me like that how what is the state of your mind how you are using your mind if you are going in past and say in my time i was doing this and that then you are old if you are <laughs> not learning then you are old and actually life teaches you lessons all the time i meet lakhs of people i they come to me for counseling they have lots of health issues management problem husband and wife they don't get along with each other children upbringing of children being with in laws and all that so many issues are there for householder i see the problems and i can very clearly point out where the problem lies and what a person is supposed to do and i guide them they follow me and they improve and they are happy and i know that every human is supposed to be knowing himself first pointing out at himself first if i have a problem first i should know where what i can do in a given situation so it becomes more self reliance sort of a stuff and all that happens and so the point is very clear that life teaches you so much that you are in a learning state so you are always young yeah you are young <laughs> you can never grow old so at 75 i don't feel i'm 75 it's the number mainly how you spend your day so i am busy all the time whole day right age, from morning <laughs> five o'clock in the I, mind yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> five o'clock i get up and at night at 11 i go to bed so i am busy throughout okay yeah you you mentioned uh, the most important thing is mm. knowing yourself mm. so um uh, let me ask you uh were, were you i mean you you mentioned when during childhood you were very confident you were even singing and and taking part in dramas and so on H- how about in your teenage years or, or college years yes. did you did you yes. face any difficulties at any point yes. yes that's a very good question at that age school was fine it was wonderful but once you go to college and you are open to all other cultures in school it was girls school and gujarati and gandhi <coughs> principal <coughs> very different but once you go to college english medium again and um, you have to really polish your english well otherwise you would be laughed at so i did some polishing english work also and then in college boys and girls together and college people forget the purpose of going to college very often i find students they go to college but the purpose behind going to college is forgotten they go to college to make friends there are boyfriends and girlfriends that teasing them and getting into love affair and all those stuffs then the purpose is to study to understand what is my aptitude how am i going to go ahead in life that purpose is a bit neglected mainly it is all these things so when i found children like that somebody will come and tell me oh i love you you are so good so are so beautiful i did know i was but they would see you externally and i used to get so angry with such boys and i would tell them you people don't know the meaning of love forget about it and don't behave like this to me i would really get angry sometimes i would slap <laughs> <laughs> to that extent i would not love these boys 
He said, they would take life very lightly and this word love is very comfortably taken. And right. so I was quite unhappy in college, during college. I was very much focused in my science studies. You like to study, you are going to college for study, but then there are people around who are not interested in study so much. They are more into that. They are maybe some businessmen's children who don't, it doesn't matter that they study or not study. They will pass and forget about it. They will be into business and they know how to earn money. So such people around can create a very different atmosphere. And I felt that, uh, yeah, atmosphere was very different than school atmosphere and you had to really adjust. And uh, so I would be always in a group of girls and uh, group, we will move here and there and face people, but sometimes you have to face alone when you are walking from your house to the college. College was walking distance for me sure. and that created <laughs> A problem. Well, yes. well, I mean, uh, it's it's wonderful to learn that you and in your time were so confident to reject the advances of of any boys and and so on. But yes, uh, yes. but uh, you know, the world's a very different place, um, Hansaji. Today, yes, many many teenagers, even young adults, um, yes. they don't have that high uh, a self esteem. They they don't have that high uh, a self confidence to. <clears throat> to you know be so single-minded so focused on their studies for example yes. um and especially now in the age of the internet um yes so easy to be uh, influenced by others and uh, there's uh, online romances and and uh, online online um photo sharing as well Let, let's put it that way i really feel that now things are more difficult than which was there in our time because now all these things are so much available in abundance, anytime, anywhere. Yes, the love affair on the internet and all those stuff, that it is quite uh, a thing and everybody has to understand, has to become more clear what he really wants in life. Distractions are many. And so we have to be focused if we want to achieve something in life and move ahead in life. And so in yoga, they say that first know yourself, and so know the type of body you have, the type of mind you have, why these type of thoughts are coming, why body. So become more thinking type, more analyzing type, more dissecting type. And that questioning type that all of us should become. And so we would not become a personality who just react to situation, just compare it with others. When there is no scope for comparing, every human is different. With whom are you going to compare? If two equal machine is there, you can compare which is better. But every human is different. Every human's everything is different. Comparison would be very wrong. So all this we have to learn and understand. And for that, my this study of Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Sutra came so much handy that I in vacation, during vacation, or uh, I would study these books. No novels, no other thing. Here, my father, again, was a main person. He would not allow any magazines to come in the house at that time. That was not internet, no more this toy, which everybody has now. And so I could make my life more focused with very much clear in mind what, how we go about. And no, my body, my body's uh, limitations, strength, my mind's limitation and strength. And for mind, I realize that I'm very sensitive, very, very touchy and sensitive. I follow certain path, but if somebody doesn't behave correctly, I just can't tolerate it. So that caused problem in my health. And one point in time, I became what's called as asthmatic. I started catching cold, cough, sinusitis, asthma, running nose, allergies dust allergy, pollen allergy, and what not at the age of, say, around 18 to 22. I was suffering from all these things. And that brought me to the center here. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. So, so, you, so you first connected with um, uh, the, the Yoga Institute in your early 20s, is it? 20s, yes. yes. Okay, during your college days. Yes, during my college days. And, and um, what was your experience? What, what did they recommend for 
asthma and and breathing disorders so, so when you come to go very well they, i came to the institute my father knew this institute well i had not visited this institute i had visited many other institute with my father everybody would teach certain things and all that i would feel fine for some time but the the problem will not be rooted out i would still catch infection the it, attack when i open a book which was kept lying down for a long time and then i open the book and then next day i have a severe attack and so many such things i watched and so i was not totally cured and so i was still searching my father was still searching and then i said let's go to this place because i have not visited this place father said i have taught you everything what they are teaching i said no let me visit so i came here with my father and that was my first day when i entered founder shri yogendra ji was walking in the compound and looking at garden cleaning the garden so well so my father said my daughter and he was very happy because he had seen me when i was small baby i was one year two year my father used to lift me and bring here and we had done one even a film uh government of india films division had made a film on yoga for family i have that film with us, with us and that's very interesting film we can always show it and uh, where my family means my father my mother myself and my brother we all are there and this family where founder mother dr jaydev vijay dev they are there and these two families uh, they showed it and at that time i was 3 year old girl and i am sitting with my cross legs and my eyes closed i am doing meditation sukhasan and then very often opening my one eye to see what's <laughs> happening around and this film was shown throughout india in the theater at that time because it was government's film yeah institute's film throughout and when when this scene would come when a small girl is opening one eye and watching <laughs> everybody in the theater would laugh so that was my encounter and then i was lost and then i came when i suffered from uh, the problem so then founder said that come on come to the class and i asked him a straight away question what do you want to teach me asanas pranayams meditation i know everything i said i was really bold i was not founder was a personality but i i did answer so then he says okay in that case join the teacher training class so then when i joined the teacher training class i would listen to the lecture of dr jaydev i would listen to the lecture of founder and these lectures were very clear to tell you that look mind supersedes body mind has a will of its own body doesn't have a will if mind gets disturbed body is going to get disturbed and mind get disturbed if you are angry if you are worrying if you are tensed if you are frustrated then mind is disturbed and this disturbed mind can cause any disease when i heard this i started watching myself and i realized that yes in my case also fine my body is flexible my breathing is so strong and still i have asthma means what yeah. means here the mind is affected and so i started watching my mind and became very strict with my mind that any negative thought somebody is some tom tom dick harry is behaving some way and why am i getting angry i should know how to enjoy them and or ignore that or keep my mind somewhere occupied so this i started doing with my mind and i was successful and here was asthma within 3 months my asthma was out and after that it's a history that i was suffering from asthma till now no attack nothing even at corona time i had no problem everybody had a problem me and my mother Yeah. both of us didn't have any infection of corona anything here and there everywhere the problem was there but we had no problem because now mind has become strong so so <laughs> the uh, the secret of beating corona corona or any disease is to keep your mind strong yes okay strong yeah. means positive happy cheerful enthusiastic yeah that's the mind 
you you mentioned uh, teachers training courses taught by Dr. Jaydev. Yes. So is this how you met um, Dr. Jaydev? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. And, <laughs> and I, I tell you, it's a very interesting thing that when Dr. Jaydev would enter the class, there were about 12, 13, maximum 15 students. Okay. In the class, yeah. the girls would be sitting on one side and boys on the other side. And this is how we would sit taking the support of the wall and teacher comes and teaches. So Dr. Jayadev, whenever he would enter and whenever he would sit with his legs crossed and start teaching, he would not look at girls at all. He would look at boys only and teach. And this was very insulting for me. I said, what is this? I mean, he, we are also sitting. He's not even looking at us. When you are teaching, you should have eye contact with everybody, no? Right. But he didn't have. He had only the eye contact with boys and this was irritating me. Then I said, this person should be taught less. <laughs> In <laughs> sense, he should learn that girls don't look at us as girls and boys. Look at us as good students. And he should be looking at us also and asking us also some questions and discussing with us also. Why only boys? So I told, went and told him that why are you doing like this? I mean, we are not... <laughs> we are girls means what? We are also come here to learn. So he said, then he was trying to look at girls also. And then I started bringing some flowers for him to make him feel good. <laughs> so so from, from, from championing um, gender equality, how did, how did you move to, yeah. to romance? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was a rose culturist. In my parents' place, we had lots of roses. And on the whole terrace, we had about 30 varieties of roses and lovely big, big roses. And I would spend two hours with my rose garden and I had learned everything about roses. And so, so lovely flowers. So I would bring a bundle of flower when I would come to the institute, the yoga institute and give that flower to Dr. Jayadev because he would be sitting on the counter. A founder would not sit or mother would not. Dr. Jayadev would sit at the reception. So I would give that flower to <laughs> reception and he would just look down and smile and take it. So then he started smiling <laughs> and it was a good thing. And second thing I observed in him is totally unaffected by the world. He was a sort of a recluse personality, very, very simple, very focused with his job. He would do it. And he would, very duty-bound person. Quickly, he would fire here. Some water leakage is there. He would run to take care of it. Pump is not working. He would run to do. He would be doing his duties all the time and never bothered about what he's wearing. His clothes would get dirty and nothing of that sort. He was wearing a loose pant and a half T-shirt like that. <coughs> and not bothered about look or proper fitting clothes, <coughs> even ironed clothes, nothing. It was that simple as that. And that really attracted me. <laughs> and I it, felt that it attracted you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <coughs> I felt that what a pure person he is. Right. What a sincere and in deep personality he is. And such person is required in life. And so when my father was forcing me that I should get married now, I'm 25 year old, I should get married now. Uh, I would not like any of these boys who would come to see me. One boy came with orange bell bottom and blue coat. <laughs> and I said, my God, I find them buffoons. I said, no, I don't want them. <laughs> I, I'm glad I'm wearing a white shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you are sweet, very sweet and nice. You are, I can see you are sincere also, very good. And so they were that time. Now I'm open. I said, come on, what you like, you wear, where is the problem? But at that time, I'm talking about my mind that I would not like. And then I liked him. And I said, I'm going to marry only Dr. Jaydev. Otherwise, I'm not going to marry anybody else. And uh, that's how I came with him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so can you tell us, um, uh, after marrying Dr. Jadev, 
entering into a family of yogis. Yes. Um, was there an adjustment period? Tremendous amount of adjustment, my dear, because my entire level of living was very different. No, there all the servants, everything ready for you, and right. here nobody. Here you have to wash your the clothes, you have to wash the vessels. The training which I got in school came here handy. Yeah, wash the toilets, wash everything, take care of institute. In institute also, somebody would do toilet on the floor and not in the pot, and you have to clean that. You know, institute varieties of people come. Some are uh, well educated, some are well mannered, and some are not. And uh, we had a group of teachers coming from some area, and all these teachers didn't know how to use even the toilet right. properly. And to such people, and institute also. And so, right from the day one, I was looking, doing all these things. We had no honeymoon or no other thing. Right. I was there very much. So it was quite a thing. That was one. Here I didn't mind. I was trained in school also. And here it was a new thing for me. Come on. It's an interesting thing. Do it. But then in the house, uh, family. It's a joint family. Father-in-law is there who is 75-year-old. Mother-in-law is there who is 60, 62-year-old. Dr. Jaydev, who is also we had a, quite a lot of difference between our age, about 18 and a half, 19 year old difference. So he's there. All our gurus. Yes. Now I'm a young girl coming in the house and uh, I'm, where is my place? So I was a bit and there, whatever you do was not accepted by my mother-in-law. You don't know anything. You don't know how to wash the vessel. This is not the way. So I would feel very much hurt in sense I felt that I have come in the family and whatever I'm doing I'm learning the way in which she is washing and all that and I was washing very well but it was something which uh, I felt that criticism was bothering me a lot I was the food was bothering me a lot varieties of I was used to varieties of food at least two three vegetables sprout papad achar chutney <laughs> <laughs> and and some sweet always and uh, some salads always. Right. That's what my parents place. And here, only one vegetable and chapati, nothing else. Okay. And vegetable okay. also was heavily cooked. So I was, my whole knowledge of nutrition, dietetics, entire knowledge of health and education, all that was on one side. And right. this family's health, I mean, food and all that was on another side. And my right. mind would tell me, this is not adequate food for you. This is good for 80-year-old person, but not for you. And I would feel deprived of nutrition. And I would then started getting weaker and weaker. And in nine months, I became very weak and quite anemic. So that was a struggle which was going on. And then what happened? My husband would tell me, look, Hansaji, you are eating food. I'm eating the same food. I'm not getting anemic. Why are you getting anemic? So again, I said, that's a good, good uh, question and argument too. So just eat happily. Don't calculate how much protein you will get and how much vitamins and minerals you are getting. Just eat happily, surrender, just eat happily. That's what doctor told me. So I said, yeah, this area again, I have to work on myself. And so I started, nobody gave me any tonic. <laughs> I started working on my mind. And said, come on now, enjoy this variety of food. Come on, no variety. Enjoy this also. You had lots right. of variety in your childhood. Now no variety. Come on. Food should not make you unhappy. You should be above food. And so, 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 so well, once again, the, the, the power <laughs> of the mind is stronger yes. than, than the, uh, the food intake. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. And then it worked well. Same thing was with washing vessel. The soap was very rough. Nice, gentle soap was not there. It was the most cheapest one. My skin would get cracked and it would be rough hands. Never seen such a rough hand. They should be always soft and nice. But no, it was. So again, the same thing. <laughs> that so, well. Again, enjoy. again, the mind is uh, the most yes. important thing to control. 
uh, I brought even in humility my, and yes and, I brought you, yeah. music into my mind because I studied classical singing so I was a, a musical minded personality also so I would then clean the vessel tang tang tak 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 thapa dan 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 da do da so I would be bringing so some music you were converting music. converting yes. work into pleasure yes okay wonderful exactly and Spe- that made my skin also normal again no problem speaking speaking of family um i'm very pleased to know that your mother is uh, healthy and hearty at the age of 95 yes and, uh, please convey our pranam to her <laughs> thank you yes also i'm i'm very happy to know that you have a 4 year old grandson yes. and your granddaughter will soon be turning 1 yes <laughs> wonderful um what advice would you give to young parents or even new grandparents okay you see these children around really make your life so wonderful but at the same time quite challenging because they need attention all the time it's 24 hours job with a small little baby and definitely good amount of whole day with that grown up boy four year old satvik and that little baby ravya so they both are there in our house making house really beautiful place to live and it is here comes the whole issue main issue with all these young parents is that they want their children to listen to them which is not possible children are not going to listen to you because don't tell child don't do this and don't do that tell child what to do what to do he is jumping here and there breaking things here and there now you have to tell child cool here is this thing you can break and make again and here you can jump and you also jump along with him and break also things and make it so this is how you have to deal with children don't tell them don't do but tell them what to do that is one because they need direction from you they they can't listen to your orders this right. uh, children are not your bonded laborers that they would say no they are very individual enthusiastic energetic personalities energy is bubbling they want to do something or other all the time <laughs> yeah and so we grown ups have to be careful and second about food we have to see that we divert their mind and put some food into their mind because mind is too much wants to see this wants to see that and this and that so we have to adapt certain things i have seen that in many houses they put video in front cartoon and child is listening looking at the cartoon and eating food yes is, of, is, is that acceptable no i would say put your effort it's because cartoon it is uh, very risky my dear let me tell you sometimes in cartoon the cartoon figure is jumping from window up down rolling here going here pulling something here doing something here now what are what is your child learning these things and some good cartoons yes some good stories are mythological stories how ganesha did this or how rama did this or how krishna did this these are wonderful things so you have to be very much selective about cartoons <coughs> but so, not with food i would say a parent should tell some nice stories and child should sit and listen which we do we don't switch on the because once child learns to see video and starts stuck getting stuck on cartoons then child will stop running around playing and all that and that would not be healthy But, and so uh, hansa ji um, and if you if you don't mind um, today not everyone lives in a in a joint household Yes uh, parent, you mentioned uh, children need 24 hours attention pa- parents yeah. are stretched now um, sure, surely they can be forgiven for a little you know uh, showing their yes. children a little cartoons from time to time yes yes but be selective and you should be alert and you should be also once in a while going and telling that oh how wonderful see how he heard this and see how he put his plate back and see all these things so cartoons right. also could be a learning area sure. no so doubt be, be about be selective be selective yes be okay. selective Wonderful. and uh, <laughs> yes and so, um, 
as it's a 24 hour job, you, you mentioned, um, uh, surely at, at some point, uh, parents might lose their patience or, um, be sort of emotionally unbalanced. Uh, could, could you, uh, <laughs> share a little bit of advice what to do then? Well, the parents should know that household is, it's an institution where also certain rules and regulations are there. You can't just live the way you want to live. As in the office, you have some system that Pune is going to do Pune's job and not boss's job. Boss will do that job, accountant will do his job and things are well organized there. In the same way in house also, there are some disciplines which we have to follow. If parent finds, any of the parent, father or mother finds that they are getting angry they should first of all learn yoga and follow that. They should leave that place maybe, but shouting and bringing voice very loudly when child is so close, they could talk very softly so that child can hear you rather than shouting very right. softly. And that really works when you start talking softly to child. And, and if you find you are irritated, go to your room, drink some water, a little bit, take a breath, one or two long breaths and settle your mind down. You should know that weak mind can never do anything good in life. It has to be balanced so, mind all the time. So have and to, have to uh, be mindful, mindfully uh, employ uh, stress management yes. Uh, techniques. Yes. All these yoga techniques really help here. And we should learn these yoga techniques. Every human should learn. We are just born. We don't even know why we are born. And now what we are supposed to do. When right. every human is different. So you should find out for yourself. What would help you immediately. Sure. And so. Uh, so um, many speaking, uh, speaking of emotional balance. Um, Hansaji, as, as I understand, um, you are no stranger to loss. Uh, I heard about your, your son's tragic uh, motor accident yes. at, at the young age of 37. Um, if, if you don't mind me asking, um, how did you, and Dr. Jayadev, how did you uh, cope with this? How did you regain your composure? Uh, I would tell you that uh, as far as death is concerned, I've seen many deaths. I saw founder going away at the age of 93 mother going away at the 97, my father going away at 90, my two brothers going at their own age, my young brother and who was the IIT head of IIT Mumbai, a physics department head, all these things. I have seen the deaths and death is something which you cannot alter. You may put any amount of effort, crying, doing anything, taking him here and there, but death is death. You have to just accept it. Again, in yoga philosophy, they have made it very much clear that every human is born with number of breaths. When those numbers are over, human will go away. You don't have to become sick to die. When death comes, you are gone. So when I have read all this philosophy, it's very clear that when my son died, who was absolutely healthy and fine, he had just gone to watch the, see the mall, which had opened new mall over there, Phoenix Mall. And uh, he wanted to go with his wife, but wife didn't go because the baby, he had a baby, Soha, uh, and um, she didn't eat properly. So the wife was very much aff <coughs> affected by that. <coughs> this is one thing more. Parents want children to eat, eat, eat. But if child has not eaten, don't worry, leave it. Child will eat when child is hungry. But pushing and making a big issue is out, should not be done. But she did it and she didn't go with my son to watch the mall. So son went with his car and driver and then the, we, the phone came saying that he's no more or he had an accident. Then we went and then all this happened. That night we got the message from a hospital that he's no more. Now, I just sat quietly when I heard this news took one or two long breaths, remembered God, that God, if that's your wish. I have to accept it. And I accept it. You gave me son, you have taken away, fine. Now I accept it. I told my husband that we have lost our son. 
and husband also was very quiet and he says okay now do whatever you can do with his body and i got the clue i said fine i phoned hospital saying that from his body you can take out whatever you can now body is a dead body burning will be burning it so if something could be used use it his eyes even his skin was so healthy he was a healthy 6 feet tall boy he was uh, uh, his liver kidney whatever you could remove remove it those people said no we will need your consent i said i am coming very soon to give all my consent and his wife also will give i am sure but you quickly do otherwise these organs would not be of any use right. so this was by reaction it was not reaction it was very clear cut understanding and i knew that sitting and crying doesn't work rather entire institute was totally gloomy when my son died nobody could even smile all right from our workers to watchmen to all the office staff to everybody and all our students but i would just watch everybody i tell them that well we have to accept it and don't feel do your work keep busy keeping busy really helps doing your work and i gave next day the lecture we did have any holiday here our routines were going on the lectures were going on and that really helped so what i did was yes during day very often you remember him whenever you sit to eat you remember that he used to love rabdi he used to love this and right. that but we don't sit and cry for that now we remember the joy the jokes which he was cracking right. the way in which he was moving around all those things he is no more but you can always keep that person in your mind physically he is not there but he is there in mind and even dr jayde when he left he wanted to leave his body and he left and he told that i am leaving he to told us that right. i am leaving and uh, when he left the body satvik my grandson was born when he left the body i told him that grandson is born and he will definitely take care of institute he is very vibrant child and i am very happy about it and he had a smile and then he left his body so that was all so i, I personally never take death as something which is wrong death right. is inevitable death anybody who is born is going to die right you for dying you don't become sick or don't have any you will be dying when the time comes so now take it so after death person is free from his body so he will be there with you all the time so we always feel patanjali dr jay my son dr jay they are all there around to help me in my work that's why i feel that i'm never tired because their help is there all the time it's it's incredible yeah. that you're that you were able to approach the matter with such strength and so quickly um uh rather i tell you when i saw too many gloomy people around one day i took tell told them come on let's go and watch movie i have to bring some joy in them right and there was a movie came oh my god that movie was there and one of our student had written that movie that movie had become very popular and he he phoned me that hansa ji my movie is coming and he didn't know that my son is gone i said fine he said theater i said get 20 tickets at least he says yes and he sent the tickets and we went to watch i told them come on let's eat outside we had dosas and idlis and all that and say come on now you start life again those who are living attend to them now he is gone but he is not gone mentally remember him but move ahead in life and i had to do all these things to Sp- speaking of uh, speaking of moving ahead uh, you mentioned your grandson will soon be uh, big and strong to to uh, <laughs> to help with the with the yoga institute but how about the immediate future um i understand your son uh, rishi ji is the assistant director yes. yes okay i've i've not had the pleasure of meeting him uh, oh. could could you tell me a little bit uh, something about him maybe his capabilities yes yes his responsibilities in in running rishi, the yoga institute yes yes rishi was a very sincere boy he studied his engineering he did his mba and he was working in a company reddington company where he was at a very good post he would be earning good amount of salary um above lakh uh, per month 
and he was very successful. But when he came to live with us and saw what we are doing, Dr. Jaydev and me, he was telling that what a corporate world, it is not corporate, but the world which you have, whole world is coming here and we can do so much here. And what a satisfaction you will get when you start helping people. And he always had the feeling of helping underprivileged people, helping poor people, helping old age people, senior citizen people, children who have no support in their life. He was that personality. And he said, fine. He says, I would like to work here. I'm leaving my job. I was little concerned. I said, look, I'm not going to give you any salary here. I can't give you more than 15,000 per month. Uh, he says, <laughs> and here you are earning so much. He says, no, I'm not doing for earning. I want to really be doing some useful work in life and society in which you are doing. So I would join. So he started working here and I gave him 15,000 rupees a month <laughs> <laughs> to make him realize that, look, he will not but I saw his dedication, his sincerity. He was a very good personality, uh, even in management. He yes, saw that this... I've, I've heard he's working very hard to modernize uh, the Yoga Institute, bringing yes. it into the 21st yes. century with, with major building renovations and, and yes. social media uh, um, yes. initiatives. Uh, very true. One... We have even now made a nice film on the Yoga Institute to show what the yoga institute now is and yes so he did all that and he is doing it working very hard it is because of the rishi my son that i became little open to reach to the world outside even to go to narendra modi when i was invited on the first indian uh, okay the first 21st june um, it is the international yoga day yes I was invited from Delhi that please come and you will be on the stage with Narendra Modi. And I sent a letter saying that I sent the message that I'm not coming. I'm very busy here with all my courses here. So uh, again, a letter comes and said, please, you should come. And I again said that I'm celebrating 21st June here in, the, in Mumbai, in my institute with lots of these, lots of my lectures are already online. So then Rishi told me, Ma, don't say no. You should go when government is calling you. You should go and don't say no. And they just wrote a stamp letter. that Just tell us which plane you are on, which flight you are coming. That's all. <laughs> and I said, yes, Rishi came with me and we went to Delhi. And that was a very big day where we were there on the stage and there were 45,000 to 50,000 people sitting and doing yoga in front of asanas and all that. And he was, we were there. So somewhere it was Rishi responsible for me to open up, to go. Otherwise we were sitting quietly in the yoga institute. Those who would come to institute, we would fully teach them everything, but we would not go out. But here it's a different case. And now after Corona, Situations are very different. See how we are talking to each other now. Yes, yes. Physically, we don't have to go. We are very much with each other and very focused with each other. And so I'm enjoying now this world also. And I'm very active now. It's all because of Rishi. My so son. Ansuchi, you are also uh, moving <laughs> into the tech world. <laughs> yes. okay. I'm not so much technology personality. Sure. Uh, when I have to speak, my people would just put me on the line and now tell me you speak and then I speak. <laughs> but sure. so many courses from, and people come from Russia, from Germany, from Brazil, from here and there on in front of me and I teach them. It is so nice to see that now more people can come. Uh, I, I, I would love to, I'd love to discuss more and, and hear more about it. But um, unfortunately, our time, our time, time is running short. Yes. Um, yes. So uh, um, be before we conclude, Hansaji, um, if there's just one uh, piece of advice you'd like to share with, uh, with everyone watching today, the most important piece, piece of advice, what would it be? Well, I would say everybody should take charge of himself, understand himself well 
and do his job with best of his capacity and don't worry about results and everything just focus on work in life also the problems come focus on not on problem but focus on solution so mind is always positive always enthusiastic and so this is how once you start living life life would be beautiful progress is definitely going to be there so everybody should be just taking charge of himself let there be sickness diseases business study everywhere you take charge and you put your effort and that's it life would be beautiful ahead so all the best and, and we are ultimately responsible for our own positivity yes. our own inner balance very true we have a and we have a choice to suffer or not to suffer if you don't take charge of yourself world will take charge of you and then you don't know how to go about so there would be loss as well as success either of it and here it would be always moving ahead not looking back yes thank you hansa ji for taking the time to celebrate our 25th anniversary with us yes yes i really um, i'm sure everyone was able to uh, pick up a few insights that they're able to apply to their own lives um such as knowing when to employ some stress management techniques uh knowing when to rely on your inner self uh practicing some judgment on on the right type of company in in maybe in college days um <laughs> once again um thank you to everyone uh for joining with us for the launch of global yoga fans and celebrating LMYC's 25th anniversary wonder i i warmly invite you including you hansa ji um <laughs> to the next webinar um of the global yoga fans on monday the, the 30th and further details will be uh, announced in due course um thank you for um thank you all so much mm. and good night okay namaste